The purpose of this demonstration is to show how to add significant value to everyday process mapping. Let's consider a typical process drawing tool. Here's an example of a drawing tool, and if we were to map a business process, this one happens to be constructed in swim lanes, where each swim lane across the process map is one role. This one is purchase officer. We can see the steps or the sequence of activities that are executed by that particular role. There are some decisions in the process, hands off volume to another role, and finally th to, through to a third role. And that's the process map. And that is in fact the problem with this particular use of tool. It draws a process, and once it's been drawn, it can either be pasted into reports, or more commonly, it gets filed in a bottom drawer to be forgotten forever. Let's consider a process modeling tool. This is an example of a tool, and we can see that the first thing that makes it different is that it is supported by a database. It has a object repository. You can see the different classification folders here for the different drawing objects, steps, roles, decisions, all those kinds of things, which supports the feature of capture once, use many. So once you've captured an object, you can reuse it many times. Let's show how to map the process using a modeling tool. It's pretty similar to a drawing tool. Here is exactly the same process map as we've constructed earlier with three swim lanes representing the three roles, the steps, and the decisions in the process. Notice that we've got three pathways through. This one happens to contain 60% of the volume, and the path two down through the no decision contains 40%, and path three, which is a scrap step, uh, some 10% of the total volume. Let's go and add some process metrics to support further analysis. There are two kinds of metrics we need to consider. One concerns the roles themselves, and the other one concerns the actual steps in the process map. So let's look at the purchase officer role. And the most important metric for that particular role is the annual cost. We're going to be running an activity-based cost model, so we need to know what the annualized cost of that role is. And these typically contain on costs. The second kind of metric con concerns those around process steps. The first step being to receive a purchase order from staff, and there are times that we can add to the particular step. There are two kinds of time. One is duration, which is the amount of time spent working on the step, and in the unit of measure of hours, this represents six minutes for that step. The second kind of time metric is one uh, which is called lag time, and this drives the overall elapsed time of the process. So we add those two metrics to the process map. Once we've captured all of the metrics in our map, we're ready to run the model. So let's have a look at the impact of workflow through the process. Here's our process map as before, and here are some results from that analysis. And there are some key results to focus on as follows. Firstly, we can see that there are three pathways as indicated by these colors. Pathway 1 is 60% of the volume th flowing through the yes decision all the way to the end, and that's a cost of $100 per iteration. Pathway 2 is where the decision at the valid purchase order is a no, and that is 30% of the time. That particular path costs us twice as much. That's a $200 pathway. Please note that the 30% is derived from 75% of 40%, so it's a pathway percentage. It's not an instantaneous split. And path 3, $60, 10% ends up as scrap. Some of the key or DNA metrics of this process are as follows. The duration is two and a half hours, so for every iteration of the process, it's about two and a half hours of effort time to run the process. The elapsed time from start to finish, including wait time, is just short of 14 hours per iteration. On average, the process costs $126 to run once. If we add the annual volume of 10,000 units, it's approximately $1.26 million per annum to run the process. I'd like to draw your attention to path two. One of the benefits of using modeling tools is that it allows us to investigate which paths contain the most potential in terms of process improvement. So we would look naturally at improving pathway two as it represents a fairly significant volume at double the cost of the other path. The objective being to get as much volume traveling through path one as possible. So let's go and look at the improved process. Two things to consider. One, we have influenced the volume by moving it up from 60 to 80% through path one. And the second thing is, these were in the past quite 
laborious manual tasks, we've sped them up dramatically by adding some automation, perhaps some workflow to assist those particular steps. If we run the analysis, we can see that that problematic path two is now only 15% of the volume and the cost has dropped dramatically from $200 to $120. We can also see that the duration has come from two and a half hours down to two hours. The elapsed time has come plummeting down from 14 hours to around three hours. That drives customer service. And the cost on average for one iteration is $100. At an annualized volume of 10,000 times, we can see that the annual cost of the process is a million dollars. That's a significant saving. Looking at the business case for change, if we look at the per process or per completed cycle metrics, we can see the duration has come down. Obviously, it's directly related to activity cost. That's a 21% saving. If we look at customer service metrics, we can see that we've improved that by a massive 77% in terms of cycle or turnaround time. And overall, if we look at the cost of the business, there's the 21% or $260,000 of savings. What does this mean for your project? If we, if we plot a simple graph of the type of outcome you're looking for from your project against the amount of effort required and therefore fees, and we pick a midpoint, let's say for argument's sake you're undertaking some sort of business process reengineering, using drawing tools, because of their very limited functionality, you end up with an, a fees or an effort and fees result out here on the graph. Because of the huge productivity gain you get from using modeling tools, you end up reducing the effort and therefore the fees of the project by about two-thirds for the same level of output. And that's a pretty impressive result. 